Hi guys, good to see you again. Just wanted to do a short introduction, so I bought myself a new mic, and therefore I can finally show some emotions without getting this as a result. Yeah. Oh, and one more thing. Thank you so much for being so active on my previous videos. You guys are the best. Come here. Mwah. Alright, let's hop in. I love math. This truly remarkable science is the basis for the vast majority of concepts studied by men throughout the scientific method, such as gravity or collision, or that one time when you tried to explain to your mom that statistically a 2.5 GPA is way above average. But many people do not like mathematics, since some concepts turn out to be so complex that only a few madmen agree to learn them. These madmen, on the other hand, are capable of blowing your mind in the most elegant way. Just imagine this. Somewhere far, far away, in the land of Oomph, there is a very interesting hotel. It is so big that people cannot possibly see the roof of it, even if they want it real badly. And as you walk in, you're being greeted by the manager saying Welcome to the Infinite Hotel! So you claim your reservation, and you're not sure by which factor you're more surprised. That the hotel is infinite, or that your room number is 99,999 quadrillion. After a few years of walking and finally getting settled in your room, you start to think, so if your hotel is infinite, is it even possible for it to get out of rooms? Can it really be considered infinite then? That's a really great question here. Let's run some logical experiments. Let's go backwards and say that all the rooms are full, and there is one guest that comes in and wants to have a room. Instead of turning him down, the manager comes up with a pretty easy solution. He asks the guest in room 1 to shift to room 2, the guest in room 2 to room 3, and so on and so forth. Basically, a guest in room N would go into a room N plus 1. That way, all the people present would still have a room, while one room would become available for the person waiting. The exact same pattern would work with any taken number of guests M, as it would basically create a sequence N plus M, where N represents the initial location of a guest, and M is the number of shifts between the rooms. And now you might ask, well, if it's possible to place an nth amount of guests into the hotel, there is no loopholes and stuff? No! It's not the end. Now the funny part. Imagine that there is an infinite amount of people standing and waiting to get the room. If not talking about the logistics of such an operation and only highlighting the math part, we can do it this way. Instead of sending people from room N to room N1, we will send them to the room of the coefficient of two of their current, 2N. That way, the person in room 1 would go to room 2, room 2 to 4, and so on and so forth. Just like that, we'll occupy all the even numbers, while the odd will be empty, leaving us with exactly half of all the rooms available. Well, half of infinity is still infinity, so I think we should be good. But then, an even more interesting thing happens. An infinite amount of lines of infinite amount of guests appears, and all of them want a room. Oh, so this must be a part where everything collapses, right? Yeah, well, not really. You see, there is actually one thing that truly infinite. Prime numbers. Okay, I would encourage you to listen closely, since this part is pretty complex compared to the other stuff. This will be on the test also, so yeah. Uh, so, we will take the first prime number, 2, and for each individual room taken, raise it to the power of that exact room. So, for example, a guest in number 3 will go to the room 2 to the power of 3. So what the same process happens with all the bosses. For each individual bus, we will take a prime number after 2, so that the first bus would have the prime number of 3, the second would have 5, and so on. And for each person on any individual seat number taken, we will take that prime number and put it to the power of that seat number. Let's say that in the second bus we have the person on the seat number 4. Therefore, his room would be the third prime number, 5, to the power of his seat number, 4. I don't think that any clarification is needed, since we already know that there is a truly an infinite amount of prime numbers. And don't ask me to explain why, because it's gonna take me like 30 minutes and I'm too lazy to do that. You know what? We can actually consider this method to be the most efficient one, since there will be actually empty rooms, considering that some numbers are not equal to the power of any prime number, such as 6. So, there is actually no loopholes? Actually, there are some. The examples that you have given are working for sure, but they are working only for the context of countable natural numbers, such as 14, 88, and so on. The first level of infinity, basically. If we are going out of this bounded concept, we will see things such as an inverse element, and they are not inverse in an easy and understandable way, such as multiplication and division. In this case, that means that an element would be an inverse of the existing element, meaning that this is technically non-existent. Only that fact implies that it is physically impossible to assign every guest to a room number, 
since there are guests that are not even in the rotation and yet they still exist. Uh, um, you know, sometimes I wonder if I'm even worthy of being a narrator. Yeah, you are. You're the best. Oh, thank you.